Hi, I'm Jess. Hi, I'm Kristen. And this is Rediscover, a conversation where we travel through everything that makes up the essence of who we are and how to live authentically and imaginatively. Here, we invite you to join us as we explore and discuss a little bit of, well, everything. From Disney to cultivating your most authentic life to deepening your relationships and talking about the real stuff. We hope you'll find this a space that speaks to you, encourages you, and brings a little bit of magic into your day. Hi, everyone. I'm Jess. Hi, I'm Kristen. And welcome back to this week's episode of Rediscover. As part of our total physical wellness theme for January, we are talking to a very special guest today who is far more educated on all of this than we are. She is Allie, holistic nutritionist and wellness extraordinaire. We wanted to bring in a professional outlook on all of the stuff that we've been talking about and introducing to you guys. And Allie is the person that taught me everything I know. And I am just so honored to have you on the show today. Welcome, Allie. Oh, thank you guys. I'm excited to be here. We are so excited. (laughs) This is going to be super fun. So we derived some questions for Allie relating to topics of holistic wellness, and we're just going to dive right in and learn even more on the show today. I'll start with my first question. (laughs) So Allie, please tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, and what passions you have held throughout your life that have led you to what you're doing now. Oh, I love it. Okay. So I grew up in the Midwest, Indiana, right in the middle of the state. (laughs) Um, But I was an athlete my entire life. I played softball and honestly just always loved a kick ass workout. And that's (laughs) kind of like, it's been a long journey from there, but I've just always had so much energy and so much passion for being active. I mean, it's truly stuck with me all the way until today. That's led me to starting my business and truly living a holistic lifestyle. So what was your relationship to food during your childhood and early adulthood? And how does it kind of differ from your relationship to food now? I've loved food. I was a chubster for sure (laughs) growing up, but I was such a happy kid. And I honestly say that it's because I ate so well and my mom was a chef. So we had it pretty nice in our household. But I did love to cook and bake with her. And now I realize I've honestly learned so much from her, just being in the kitchen and watching her. But my behaviors around food were always pretty positive. I was just super interested in learning more as I was growing up on how to properly fuel my body to support athletic performance. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much still what I concentrate on now is supporting the body in all aspects of life. I've definitely gone through bouts of looking at food in a negative way and taking it to extremes, especially being an athlete and just overdoing it and not giving my body enough. I ended up hurting myself pretty deeply, I guess you could say. But at the same time, learning more about food and really what it does to the body is kind of what saved me too. Mm -hmm. So it's been a big journey. I think it's definitely changed throughout my life. But overall, now I just concentrate on supporting it the best that I can. I think that was one of the biggest things I took away from working with you is that food is truly fuel for your body. It's not just something that you have to do or you overconsume or overindulge. Like it's truly the fuel that makes your body go. Yes. So many of us kind of look at it as it's so mathematical and we have to super calculate everything when the body just is simple. You know, Mm -hmm. if we can just give it the simple, basic things and kind of step out of the way that is where I believe the balance comes and you feel and you see a difference yeah. and then it kind of becomes addicting because you just feel so much better that yeah. you want to keep eating healthy and doing all the good things. Yeah. Right. I always make jokes about green smoothies. I'm like, I just want a green smoothie after Christmas. My body was like fatigued and I was like, I don't yeah. have any energy. And I always joke, like, I just want a green smoothie. And someone <laughs> was like, you can't possibly just want, <laughs> I thought of the like Lord of the Rings meme, like one does not simply crave a green <laughs> smoothie. And I was like, no, but really I do. Because once you get into those patterns of like cultivating healthy eating habits and you pay attention to how your body responds when you give it the fuel that it's asking for, you 
do start to crave those things and they replace the cravings that weren't fueling your body. And it's not about like bad versus good. It's just about what's actually going to get your body through the day and promote like overall wellness. Now I want a green smoothie. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So when did you know that you were called to do nutrition and holistic health as your life's work? And what was your education journey with learning all of this? Honestly, kind of where I just said where my personal journey was, Mm -hmm. um, it led me to realizing that food is everything. It's all about what we put in the body. And Mm -hmm. so again, when I wanted to perform really well, it was all about the food. And then I went through a phase and this was my pivotal point was in high school, you know, I did start to choose healthier options, nothing extreme. I still ate bagels and pop tarts like (laughs) all the time, but I really just started to pay more attention. But the pivotal point was I had huge digestive upset, further leading into severe candidiasis, which is a bacterial dysbiosis in the intestinal tract. So our bodies really want a good balance of bacteria, ideally more good than the bad, Mm -hmm. um, to keep us healthy. I mean, it's going to fight things off. It's infections or just bacteria. And I had a major imbalance with this in my microbiome. So I was getting super sick because of it. And it was, you know, anxiety and depression and things that I really wouldn't even before think were due to the food that I was eating. So with this, and then along with my athletic journey, I was just so eager to learn more. So out of college, I actually was training professional athletes and it wasn't nutrition. It was more of strength and conditioning. And again, all of this combined that I decided to go back to school. And that's when I got my master's in nutrition, all of this combined that I was just like, whoa, I, I'm so interested in this, but I want to figure out really what's going on because I wasn't getting a lot of answers from doctors and Mm -hmm. things were just so confusing and people didn't know a lot yet about the gut microbiome. And that is what I focus on now as a nutritionist and what I think everyone can gain benefit from when they kind of tune into it and can really start to balance it out a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've had a similar experience where we felt like going to doctors or going to a gastroenterologist or whatever was just like yielding nothing. And we really had to just kind of start from square one. (laughs) Yeah. How did you end up figuring out it was that bacterial infection? Was that through a certain type of doctor? Yeah. I was working with a functional medicine doctor Mm -hmm. at that point. And we did a ton of tasks. This was probably like 12 years ago. Mm. It's interesting. I mean, I still have like all those test results, you know, still looking back on them and everything, but it definitely is very crucial and important to get those tests done. I think if you're going through something that severe or you just can't simply figure it out. So I definitely had help along the way for sure. That's fantastic. We talked about like a situation each of us had that we'll kind of go more into in a later episode, but where we were both experiencing something really severe. And like I was in the emergency room and she was super sick and in completely different years of our lives and completely different circumstances and hospitals, they were like, Oh, it's indigestion. Here's a Pepsi. (laughs) The amount of times I got prescribed Pepsi. (laughs) I do not have indigestion. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's frustrating when you're, when you're hurting and like, yeah, no, there's no answers. And really the biggest thing is what I try and do now is really look at the underlying reason of why something's happening. So, you know, a lot of Western medicine or just, if they're not sure, they're just going to try and cover up the Mm bandaid when really, if we want like ultimate health and we want to just feel our absolute amazing best. Like we have to get down to, okay, why, you know, like what is the underlying reason that's holding me back? It's kind of like going to therapy for your mental health. Like you have to really start unpacking everything to get to the root of it, to fix the problem, to move forward. So if we're taking care of our mental and emotional health in that way, why are we not taking care of our physical health in that way? Yeah. That is such a good way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of on that same note, actually, we know that you identify as a holistic nutritionist and we're super, super passionate about this approach, but 
why do you find a holistic approach to be the most effective? The body loves to be in balance. And Mm -hmm. a lot of what we do as humans, just living our daily lives, whether that's a lot of stress or not having good movement, but being super, super forceful with movement Mm -hmm. or not sleeping well and kind of pushing that on the back burner. We just kind of get in the way of our natural balance. Mm -hmm. And so I think when our bodies can find harmony, that's what I'm all about. Like when we can step out of the way and give it what it truly needs and kind of just chill out. Like, yeah, don't worry so much. Don't put the pressure on yourself. Like the body is so amazing and can do amazing Mm. things. So we just need to support it more than anything. Yeah. I believe like, again, once you find that balance and, and you can build that holistic background of things, you're going to be good and it's going to feel really good. Yeah. Mm. I love the word harmony to describe (laughs) your body because I felt such imbalances within my body over the past few years and that disharmony. So the thought of harmony within the body is just such a beautiful feeling. (laughs) Manifested. I love that. So the next question, how did you start your business called Shifting Nutrition and what are all the moving pieces that continue to contribute to its success? It started slow and I was building it while I was still getting my master's. I just knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to be one-on-one with people and I wanted to look at each person as an individual. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that's how nutrition has to be. I mean, just based on our genetics, but our lifestyle, our social influences, even like our nutrient deficiencies and the toxins, even if we think about the infections that we've experienced over our lifetime, so much goes into, I mean, we even like different foods. So I started building my programs on what I wanted to give people. I don't want people to feel like they're on a diet to eat healthy, but really find again, what works for them, what creates that balance in your body, what is healthy for them that is attainable and realistic and sustainable all at the same time. So those were kind of my big ideas that I wanted to have. And now I put different programs together here and there to educate people further on this. So they get a deeper understanding. Also just doing things like seasonal resets where people are kind of working together and feeling it together. So I guess there's still a lot of moving parts, but I definitely, like I said, I I built my foundation. I had my ideas and then I just started to share my story too. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people could just start to connect with if it was, you know, digestive upset or being an athlete and wanting to perform well or any of those things. And now it's really continuing to share all of that. I love it. It's amazing. (laughs) And I love that you love it because it shines through your work. And as one of your clients, it has made a huge (laughs) difference for me. And no one can tell your story like you can. And nothing is as credible or as impactful as like a personal testimony. I really feel that being on the journey that you've been on and experiencing some really scary lows and coming from that and having to reframe everything based on that is huge because you're kind of like a living example that it works. I appreciate that. Because you talked about wanting to work with people individually because nutrition should be personal and individual. Tell us a little bit about how you customize and personalize your expertise into something actionable that your clients can use on the daily to build healthier habits. Again, I meet the person where they're at. I never want to push nutrition on anyone and I don't expect them to be at a certain place. So Mm -hmm. everyone is so different. So we start, of course, with just going through their whole health history And then I like to just get a peek at their diet right now. Where are you? So then we can move forward in that sustainable way. And we just start to build little steps. Again, I don't want to put pressure or set expectations way too high. So it's really just, you know, what they're comfortable with and what's going to make the biggest impact quickly Mm. so that they feel it. And so there's certain things that I do with people within like that first week. And then we just take it from there. And I love to give handouts and we keep in touch. We do different charting stuff online and we have sessions every two weeks. So there's like different things that we're actively doing together. I really believe giving people a structure, but also keeping them accountable is 
a lot of the time what people are looking for when mm. they come to work with me. So I love writing things down. I think some people are like that too. And just knowing, okay, this is exactly what my body needs. Mm. The calories I, it needs to support me and for my, my activity level and all of that throughout the day. Yeah. I think the client perspective. Yeah. From the client perspective, I remember because it's been a little while since we've been doing an actual one-on-one. Allie was really great about looking at all the symptoms I had and then finding recipes that had the right ingredients for me and then making suggestions on certain types of products. And you're always really stressing how important it is to find those products with clean ingredients, which is something that I've really taken on moving forward. And that whole educational piece where we'll just sit down and you'll teach a little bit more about something that I've never really heard about. And then I can take that information and I keep it with me when I'm moving forward and making choices with what I'm putting into my cupboards and my diet. To keep nutrition realistic, we all grab the packaged and processed stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you look at like every single diet, right? And I don't really like to say this whole foods program that I run is more of a diet, but any, all research, if it's vegan, if it's keto, if it's paleo, whatever you're choosing to do or what's best for you, they all start by saying, watch out for the sugars in the packaged and processed foods. Mm -hmm. Like they all start that way. And then they build on, okay, some have more protein, some have less carbs, you know, whatever. But the foundation of them is really, you want to be eating as whole and real as possible. But again, the convenience of, okay, if you're having a taco night, like I love to bring that balance into people's lives. So it is also, okay, if we're going to eat that stuff, let's make sure it's, you know, full of the good ingredients that our body can still respond to. And again, Mm -hmm. then we're not getting in the way, kind of like I was saying, step back and take another second to really realize what you're putting in your body. And it can make such a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I'm picking recipes nowadays, we'll just go on Pinterest and be like, hmm, that sounds good. But we always shift it now where we'll be like, we need some alley ingredients. Like we label <laughs> them as alley ingredients because you're our yeah. inspiration. My mom and I have worked with alley and you're our inspiration in the house, but we're able to adjust recipes now with ingredients that we learned mm-hmm. from our coaching to make sure we're putting ingredients in our bodies that our bodies respond well to versus whatever the automatic or the go-to is. Like if it's heavy cream, like we're going to replace that with, you know, coconut Coconut milk milk. or something. I love it. (laughs) That's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And and that is really why I call my business shifting nutrition is it's just a shift in what you're doing so that you feel the shift within your body. And it's, Mm -hmm. it is so cool. And the biggest thing is that you stay consistent with those. Again, that's where you'll find the balance too. Yeah. Yeah, Our, our cupboards look totally different than before we started working with you, but we still have so much fun. And I think knowing the information now you can just have fun with it and get creative with it. And that motivates you to keep going with it because and it is a genuine shift which is the long lasting effect oh where, that makes me so happy to hear oh <laughs> we have fun we've got binders of your recipes <laughs> yeah that's how we figure out our dinner <laughs> so like, i come over to record and we're like having an alley meal <laughs> I'm like, oh, i'm so excited <laughs> it's so yeah. fun so what are a few rituals that we can all incorporate into our daily routines to start on the road to holistic wellness so For our listeners who are new to this, I think one of the biggest things is start to be in tune with your body, Mm -hmm. with yourself, meaning you can even start with your hunger levels. A lot of us, you know, it's eight o'clock, it's breakfast time, it's time to eat. When really like, is our body even ready for food? Mm -hmm. You know, are we putting food in just because we're bored or if it's out in front of us? So starting to realize (laughs) when you're eating and then also start to even like write it down how you're feeling after you eat something. Cause again, like for me, there was a lot of hidden food sensitivities and things that were, you know, ingredients in food that were causing me extreme anxiety. And I had no idea. Hmm. So relating, okay, I got a stomach ache after that meal, write it down. Or if you could take a nap or, and you're just zapped of your energy, or even if you're not waking up while rested, well, were you eating dinner super late? So starting to become in tune of, 
your timings of your meals, and then just what your meals are and how your body feels. So nothing complicated, but even if you just start to journal that out, you might find a lot of different connections for yourself. I think it can be incredibly powerful. I'm somebody who wakes up in the morning and I'm not hungry for several hours after I wake up. Maybe I want tea or maybe coffee or something, but I usually just drink water. So many people are like, oh, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. I'm like, that's your body. I can't do that because if I eat as soon as I wake up, I actually feel uncomfortable or I feel tired or I feel like my energy is depleted. So it's not really the most important meal of the day for me. For me, it's lunch. Well, and that again is why we're all so unique and so individual. And and you're right. You don't want to be shoving food in your body if it's not asking for it. Right. But at the same time, we don't want to be denying our bodies either if it mm-hmm. needs food. You know, if yeah. we're like, no, I want to be fasting. Well, maybe that's not their best fit for you. Right. You know, and pushing food off and denying yourself of that might be backfiring rather than being supportive. So yeah. But again, there's, there's so many different ways to look at it and go about it. And that's kind of the beauty of it though, is personalizing all of it. Yeah. And we love to personalize. Yeah. (laughs) Looking forward and it being a new year, this is a great time to do something like this, but what is your ultimate vision for shifting nutrition? And if you had this ideal impact or vision in your mind, what is the ideal impact you'd like to make in other people's lives? Oh, it's such a good question. Another one. I really just want people to understand how simple it can be, mm-hmm. like how happy and healthy you can be and not have to stress and worry about food. I think in the long term, I just want to keep sharing and building that with as many people as I can. I don't really have like a set number or huge mm-hmm. thing that I'm working towards. It's just more of a continual thing on a daily basis of sharing with as many as yeah. I can. So oh, that's beautiful. Kind of like how it's so important to have consistency with your nutrition. <laughs> Shifting nutrition will be consistent too. <laughs> yes. So we have some rapid fires for you. At the end of our episodes with our guests, we like to do some rapid fire questions. We have some specifically for Allie, and then we have a few that we ask for all of our rediscover guests. Okay. All right. Favorite kitchen gadget. Oh, this is easy. My handheld frother. Oh, I got that for my mom for Christmas and she got so excited. (laughs) I bring that thing everywhere. It's just so fun to make little lattes. I just love it. To put on your coffee and your tea. It's great. So fun. What is your favorite form of exercise? Lifting weights for sure. What is your favorite drink? Oh, coffee. (laughs) <laughs> me too. Do you, do you make it a certain way? Well, being in Portland and living here for a couple of years, they are big coffee people. Mm. And so I really got into like the Chemex pour over, mm. but oh, very other cool. than that, I'm just like a black coffee. Like I love the actual, just me too. Yeah. Real, yes. Real black. Allie, because you said coffee, there's this like organic juice bar and coffee shop literally within walking distance of my apartment. And I love it so much, but they have something called a peanut butter cup latte. And it's literally espresso, organic cashew milk that they make in-house, peanut butter, protein powder, and raw cacao. And that's oh, it. My God. And it is, it literally tastes Dumb. like a good homemade peanut butter cup with espresso in it. It's amazing. Oh my gosh. It sounds like it's it. so good. So maybe you'll riff on that at some point. I would. Yeah. I might have to ask you for that. Okay. Next one. What is your favorite supplement? Ooh, honestly, I live on my vegan protein powder. Mm. I love to just have a different source of protein, especially still lifting a lot and being super active. Mm-hmm. But the one that I use, I'm just obsessed with because it is super clean and it's delicious. It's New Zest, N-U-Z-E-S-T. Okay. We'll link it for the listeners. Sounds I had like that it. in my smoothie this morning. So. Oh, <laughs> nice. It was, it was really good. And then to round it out, what is your favorite indulgence if you are going to treat yourself? Anything peanut butter and chocolate. Ooh. Oh, well, this, this I know. So I know. You were kind of just saying that. I, <laughs> But really, like any cookie. I do love ice cream. I'm mm-hmm. a big ice cream lover but yeah anything peanut butter and chocolate it's just a divine combo okay okay so we have our final four questions for you so these are the questions we ask for all of our rediscover guests so number one is what does living authentically mean to you I think just being happy and true to who you are and what you want to do in life Mm -hmm. yeah you know and 
not really give a shit about what other people think. <laughs> just no, it's living true. true to who you are and just being happy with that. Yeah. I, think that I love that. Yeah, we, we don't give a shit what other people think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if you could travel anywhere in the world right now, where would it be and why would you go there? Oh my gosh, I would probably, I've been dying to go to Northern Europe. Like, Ooh, okay. Like Norway, Sweden. Mm, yes. There. I don't know so about like the time of year, but I mm. also would like love to see Switzerland, like yes. in the snow. I yeah. love that. Northern <laughs> Europe. That's a good one. That's like not one you hear all the time. Next, what is one thing you would be doing every day if your life were free of limitations? Oh my gosh, I would like live outside. <laughs> <laughs> If I could camp, if I could hike, if I could snowboard, anything outside, I would be doing it constantly. So, I mean, if you could just put me up in the mountains forever, I'd be a happy girl. That's so. a phenomenal answer. Last one. I guess I should preface this one because it's a little interesting, but we talk a lot about the difference between being childlike and childish and how like they're two very different things. And we find a lot of really commendable qualities in kids that adults just seem to lose over time. So what is one childlike quality that you feel would be beneficial if more adults utilized it in their daily lives? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know it's kind of a tricky Honestly, one. if we could just all be stress-free, that would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Like they don't have anything to worry about. They just live their life. They're so happy. There is no stress of anything. Yeah. And I think that could solve a lot of our problems. <laughs> right. <today. laughs> I think it's because they don't feel like, you know, worry or fear has power over them because they're just like, things will be taken care of. Maybe if yep. we just kind of surrendered more, <laughs> yeah. we would worry less. <laughs> All right. We're done interrogating you now. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was awesome. Thank Yay. you so much for sharing your wisdom, both here and in your everyday life and on Instagram. Would you like to tell everyone where they could find you if they have any questions? For Instagram, it's at shifting.nutrition. Mm -hmm. And then I do share like all my recipes and more about my programs and just more about me on my website as well, which is shiftingnutrition.com. Awesome. Wonderful. And we will, of course, link all of that in the show notes below. This episode was kind of like a testimonial in real time from uh, a yeah. client and yeah. our coach. Yeah. <laughs> this was really fun. Thank you so much for taking time to do this with us and give more insight because I know our social media episode that we mentioned you in earlier on in the podcast it sparked a lot of interest for people. Thank you guys so much. You are so welcome. It's a great month to approach health and the new year from a longevity standpoint, from the perspective of really looking at your total wellness and how to cultivate that over time to live a long and happy and healthy life. And Allie is nailing it. You're killing it every day. And we are just so excited about everything you bring to the table. And whether you are familiar with holistic nutrition or not, whether all of this sounded confusing or new to you, please head over to Allie's website and her Instagram and pick up some new knowledge for the new year. Your Instagram is such a great tool. Even if you're just casually scrolling through your stories, there's always something to learn. You will so. get hungry though. I will warn you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you guys. I appreciate the sweet words too. Of course. Thank oh, you thank so you. much, Allie. And mm -hmm. thank you guys so much for listening. We have one more wellness episode coming at you next week, talking more about our own personal wellness journeys, our health journeys. So that's been a highly requested one. So yes. stay tuned for that. We hope you have a wonderful week. We'll talk to you soon. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Rediscover. Please subscribe and leave us a review wherever you're listening. Your reviews are what keep us going, and we'd love to hear from you. Join us every Tuesday for a new conversation, and let us know what you think we should talk about next. Follow us on Instagram at positively.kristen and at jessicafay508. And check out Jess's blog at theroadjesstraveled with one L.com. Until next time, stay frumpy! <laughs> <laughs>